Hello, everybody. Welcome to Dungeon D-Pads. I'm Sam Ryan. I'm here with the Vault King. I am the Vault King. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And I'm running around a circle in a room. I don't know why. I, do I remember right? Yes, I do. Ah, yes. We were on the search for an Ursa Ring and a Smurgle. We currently have a decent amount of Pokemon in our a uh, decent amount of Pokemon that we've been snagging. We're just missing that many. Uh, Fully there. We caught the we caught the Deli Bird. Uh, the Meditite has yet to appear. So I hopefully I don't have to go back into that bloody tunnel to find that. Hopefully I don't. Right. Anyway, where were we? We were going this way. Uh, right this way. Uh, 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 who are you? Talk to the big man. I'm, I was talking about the lady, but... In fact, there was a bloke up there. There, I'm not sure. I think we missed and talked to. Sorry? There's also a guy upstairs. There's, I'm not sure if we talked to. No, we already talked. We came, Last time we were at teams, uh, the hideout, we talked to that guy. So it's not him. We know it's not him. Right. He's got a shroom... Uh, a shroomish... Oh, so we can find Lynn Surf. Congratulations, Suki. Suicine. You're actually finally useful. Suicine? Suicune. I don't know where you get your pronunciation, mate. I really don't. I mean, it's not as bad... As, like, it's not as bad as what people... Uh, when I was doing um, Skyward Sword with Voyage... Like you know the the like one of the main antagonists, Garahim. I always I always call him Garayim. I don't know why. I just I'm just like okay, that guy's Garayim. I just remember hearing Suicine a lot, so it's kind of got ingrained in my brain. I don't know where, but I remember hearing it a lot. Wasn't it Hawk that uh, took that pronunciation and you ran with it? Well, it makes sense. It was also makes sense why it's stuck in there. I've heard it for many years. Mm. Who wants mushroom soup? Is there any turtles in it? <laughs> turtles and mushroom soup, yes. We're eating the ninja turtles and shroomish. Yeah, Shr Shredder got a soup. Found a bunch of squirrel. Yeah, he got a little disap. He couldn't take on the real. finish off the real turtle, so, uh. He's settled for squirrels. I love the idea that I love the idea like sh like uh, Shredder went to went here in England and made Shreddies like the cereal. So it's like I I'm not making it in New York. I'm going to England to make a cereal. Knitted by grannies. Oh, I remember that advert. Yeah, knitted by grannies, which is um an odd proposition. It's just like oh hello dear, I made your favorite breakfast. That just makes me think Shredder, uh, when Shredder, it wasn't just created, it was his retirement plan, plan. We got too old to be a ninja. And then he suddenly turned into a woman and started knitting Shreddies. Okay. So, Shredder has a sex change. <laughs> I, I, like, if that's what, if that what makes him happy, go right ahead. But, uh, I, I, it's just, I'm, I'm, it's just kind of funny. He just, like, fights ninja turtles and then comes to England to knit a cereal. Just like, hello, dear. I used to fight turtles, you know. Sure, Grandma. Everyone was doing it. Me, the plumber. There was even a man that was a brain. And a lady called May. Or was it June? I forget. April. Yeah. Yeah, I know I'm just thinking of it, but I'm trying to think of what's actually people's was problem with turtles, because it's Mario's enemies, it's Shredder's enemies, they can't be enemies in Pokemon, it's just like, what's the intent, what's, what's the, what's the beef with turtles? I love, I love the idea of Shredder and Mario uh, teaming up. It's like, I, I punch you the turtles! And Shredder's just like, I'll good, it's a good idea, I'll join you. Smurgle, Smurgle, Smurgle. Hi, Ty. 
Oh, it's Cousin Shredder. How's it going, Cousin Shredder? Yeah, Shredder is Barry's Japanese cousin. I don't think Shredder's really Japanese, but I guess it works. Um, in love his origin stories, he's shown to be Japanese. Because he's an actual ninja. I was never that into the Ninja Turtles, honestly. Like, I watched it a little bit as a kid, but I was just like, eh, it's okay, I guess. And I know a lot of people are saying blasphemy. It's just like, I'm sorry, it just didn't really tickle my fancy. Yeah. It's also the reason he takes down a lot of his, ninja, his own ninjas, because he's disappointed because they don't follow the true ninja values, and a lot of them is also... They are terrible ninjas, as ninjas you don't know anything how to actually do it, which is like, train your Foot Clan to actually be ninjas. Hmm. Now, which one is the Smurgle we're after? I assume it's that level 45 one? Maybe? Let's have a look. That didn't tell me anything. Uh, yeah, it's the 45 one. Okay. Alright, uh, Shadow Rush, that Smurgle. Sir Jelly, you have nothing but AOE, so you do that. Yeah. Also, the lot of the origin stories, uh, Master Splinter is either shown to be a rival pupil who got turned into a rat, his brothers got turned into a rat, or his pet rat, depending on the origin story, but there's always been a connection between Shredder and Splinter. Hmm, makes sense. Yeah. Suicune, now is not the time to do that. I have to call them both. Hey, Suicune! Hey, Sir Jelly! <laughs> oh, focus punch. Which in turn also means split is also Japanese. Not necessarily. He could have bought the so-called pet in New York. It's often sh shown with the orange stories back when he was in Japan at the time. Or they could have bought it in, in New York, then took it to Japan, and then took it back. <laughs> New York. Yes, New York, New York, mate. New York. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Splinter is uh, meant to be Japanese. Or at least uh, he's most likely Japanese. I'm fine with that. Well, while the turtles, yeah, they're American. Would you leave Sir Jelly alone? He's trying to put you asleep, not the other way around. Also, don't you dare. Okay, good. Alright, okay. Poor Sir Jelly. Right, I'm going to switch out Suicune because he's been a, uh, they're being a liability here. Um, Mutton, because uh, he's got static. Static could help us here. Who is Sir Jelly? They don't really, they really don't like Sir Jelly. So this one's got Spore and Focus Punch. It's not a bad idea because Smurgle's pretty quick, so that's not a bad idea. Also, I love that it's using Poker Punch with its tail. Right, uh, I'm going to Thunder Wave you, and I'm going to Yawn you. That works. There we go, quick cloak sh uh, shot off there. And Thunder Wave. Your eye bolts, you suddenly went all quiet. I'm trying to identify a smell. Okay, what kind of smell is it? Is it a smelly smell that's smelly? Yes. Okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, that... That... That's it. Something left over the bin. Oh. Up the cupboard a bit. What do you mean, something knocked it over? There's nothing here, but I'm guessing it's somebody's large butt. I love the idea, there's like, no one's here then. Who knocked over the bin? It's a ghost! It's a dirty Ooh. ghost! Ooh, ghosty! It's a ghost that loves filth. Oh, I didn't want you paralyzed, I want you to put to sleep. Ah, that's annoying. Okay, um... I'll just start hucking po Pokeballs out of them. Get in the ball, Beagle. 
Uh, I'm gonna bring out... I'm gonna call you Bagel. Because you're a Smeagol. You're, so you're a Beagle. So you're a Bagel. Uh... We could call it Donut. Actually, no, it's... it's isn't uh, Smeagol like a French painter? Yeah, it's meant to be a French painter, but it's also a Beagle. We could call it a waffle. We could make a Belgian, a Belgian waffle. <laughs> what do you think? Mm. Crepe, creep. No, I'm not. No, I'm not calling it crepe. No, mm -mm. no, mm -mm. I refuse. They, they are pancakes. What else can I call a beagle? What sounds like beagle? What matches the beagle for what matches a dog? Whenever I think Spiegel, I always think Smeagol from Lord of the Rings. Smeagol! Wiener! I, we can call it Wiener. That's a... Mm, I'm not sure about that. What am I doing? You use it, then you switch out. What am I doing? Right, use it, and then... Because I'm running out of great balls. Uh, reflect. Uh, the the reason I'm not hitting the smugglers because smugglers are paper thin. All they have is speed and their ability to sketch. If I hit just once, it'll probably get it'll probably get knocked the fuck out. Onion ring. Onion ring? Where's that coming from? It's got ring around his eyes and his head. It sort of looks mm. like an onion or a shallot. What kind of onions have you been eating? Wonky onions. For the cheaper. <laughs> I've been buying the wonky vegetables because they're cheaper. I mean, to be fair, that's 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 a fair tactic. Like, a lot of people should do that. Yeah, they taste no different from the regular veg. In fact, some of them taste better. Yes, like, a lot of people are like, oh, it needs to be pristine. No, it just needs to taste good. Like, don't worry if it looks odd. I actually b prefer the wonky ones because they, they, they are definitely real while they they look fake. It's also why I like the rustic meal with a slight little bit of char and burn more than the pristine perfect ones that you see because uh, that one looks fake and it looks like it's more of a prop or anything while the pristine, the home cooked one with the slight burns on the slightly misaged but uh, it's definitely well made. That looks like a legit pup. It would look like a real pie instead of one that's been bought in a factory. It kind of reminds me of how, um, like, people do CG art. Like, uh, people are starting to realize that now, but uh, a lot of people had, like, problem with the human face when it came to CG, and it looked kind of un in Uncanny Valley direction. And the reason was because they were making it too perfect. The, hu the human face is not perfect. Like, like, there's imperfections all over your body, and that's what makes you look human when it comes to CGI. And a lot of people weren't getting that for the longest time. That's why, like... Stu like you see, like CG artists, like it looks at Uncanny Valley. Yep, yep. As someone who, as an amateur artist, yep, the human body is not perfect. That's why in proportions. It's like, oh, I'm just gonna mirror everything perfect. It's not gonna look right. The human no. body does not look perfect. People go, oh, you just need a circle. No, a human head is not a perfect circle. It's circular, but it's not a perfect circle. Nor is it a perfect oval. It's more oval like, but even then, that's just that's just like a base. Then you make it look more wonky. Yeah, which is why it's okay with drawing it as a base underneath, but it's a base. You do not need to match the line perfectly. In fact, don't match the line perfectly, or else it's going to look wrong. Yeah. I used to do some art as a teenager, but now it's just like I don't really do that anymore, mainly because like kind of lost my motivation to do so. Depression isn't fun. No, it's not. Mm -mm. Also, sorry about this. This Smurgle is uh, taking, a, taking a while to capture, because I don't want to hurt it. I don't want to hurt the Smurgle. I'm going to stop calling you nice food names. I'm going to start calling you trash ones until you get in the ball. Yes, I'll call you Baguette. That's a bad name, right? Also, sour door, sour bread door. Like I've, I've, I've heard, 
I've heard uh, I've heard Americans that love sour bread, and I'm just like, no. Whoa. I've tried sour bread, and it tastes wrong. It tastes like it's gone off, and it's just like, it's sour dough, dough, dough bread. No, you mean expired bread. Yeah, it does. Like I've tried it as well. I'm just like, no. Like, how how is this a thing in America? Then again, there is there is um there is that type of chocolate in America that is actually made from curdled milk and tastes like vomit. So maybe it's a bit fun like maybe it's a bit everything's funky in America. So I yeah. don't know. God damn, get caught. Unless it's somebody who who lo loves bread and all that, absolutely big. You say basic. Yeah, it's basic. It's still good. In fact, some of the best meals I've had was just simple. With simple stuff, with simple, well-made bread from a bakery. Why does everything we, why does everything we talk about eventually revolve around food? I think we're rather hungry, aren't we? Yeah. But if this isn't a good piece of bread, Smeagol. Your burnt crust. I'm going to Ooh, call I like, you. I, I actually like the name crust. I actually like that. Yes. That's. But I'm adding the burnt part. You are burnt crust because you, you are not in the adversary. You've been annoying. I actually like the I like I actually like the name toast for it. Yes, but toast is a nice, well cooked bread. This is burnt. It's bad bread. For bad bread, you're getting in the ball. Hawk act Hawk's actually not fond of bread, and I'm just like that's very strange for a west like a western person. Very strange. I'm not oh, saying it's bad, bread. it's just... Yeah, I love it as well. It's because um, bread is typically a comfort food when it comes to the West. We, like, we eat that because it's typically the first things we have as an infant. And so it reminds us of younger times, and that's how it can become a comfort food. Pork doesn't get that for some reason. It's interesting. Like, that's kind of the gate of the psychology, I guess. Let's get in the damn ball! I mean, think of another not-so-good name. I'll, I'll name you Bacon. I don't like Bacon. Bacon is too good for you. I like bacon. I don't. Well, Sally, there's not a lot of food I don't like, but uh, <laughs> instant pasta. I hate instant pasta. Regular pasta is fine, but instant one tastes wrong. I hate celery. I I don't I don't like celery. Get in no, the bowl, man. you damn bowl of instant pasta. I know this is tedious, but like I said, Smeagol is frail as shit. One tap could, uh, one tap could fuck us here. So I'm, tr I'm being very cautious. Yeah, especially since we've had this one fight and we're nearly out of time. We're not out there yet, but we're approaching. Hmm. Yeah, we are. Get in the ball, you rotten bag of nuts. If we if we go overtime, warrior, don't uh, you, can, you could clip it a little bit if you want. Don't worry. Oh, you're too good to be rotten nuts. <laughs> I think of another bad day. We could, oh, we could call a pigeon milk. You know what pigeon milk is? I don't want to. Pigeon milk is pigeon pigeon milk is basically what you call. You know, you know when a, a a bird is feeding its child and it vomits it vomits its stuff into it. That's pigeon milk. It's regurg it's regurgitated it's regurgitated food. Very well. I I won't even be giving you such a nice name. Your second hand food. And uh, when it, whoever's played Animal Crossing, you know when you uh, you talk to Brewster and you start to become friends with him, he'll eventually say, "Do you want pigeon milk in your coffee?" Say no. Please say no. That's it. You're now get. Since you're a dog, I'll at least give you that. You are now going to be tinned dog food. Do you, do you know that? Um, I'm I'm not sure about the audience, but do you know that the uh, tinned dog food, the smell is actually artificially added just so humans won't eat it. Yeah, because it's actually somewhat edible. It's not nice, but it's edible. I mean, you can't have the poor eat something edible. Yeah, they purposely put this. They purposely put the smell to put it off to humans. Like dogs don't care, but us, like it's purpose, purposely so humans won't eat it. Thank there you. There you go. That is your name. You are now tinned dog food. 
No, let's just call him dog food. Let's just call him dog food. Because he's edible, but I don't want to eat him. Let's call Because he is a dog as well, so that works. <laughs> How about tea dog food? Or, or dog food tea? His middle name is just tea, but we know it's tin. We could call him chum, as in pedigree chum. We could call him chum. Anyway, I think we're out. We're out of time, aren't we? Yes, we are out of time. And the reason I'm not moving forward because I know who's ahead of this guy, and it will cause another battle. So I'm just gonna stand here for a second. Next time on Dungeons and Pads, we'll fight the guy that's in front of him. And I believe I remember what this guy has. I think it's an Ursa ring. But until then, it's goodbye from me, Player One. And me, Player Two. We'll see you next time, and we'll punish the Smurgle. Bye. Bye.